Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivas, the Carb Addiction Doc, and today we're going to unpack something that more and more people are hearing about and being afraid of and using as a way to manipulate their diet, and that is the MTHFR gene and gene deficiency or missing gene from your body's genome. Uh, the MTHFR gene is a gene that codes for a particular enzyme, and the long name of it is the methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase gene. And what does it do? It's a rate limiting step in what we call the methyl cycle. And methylation of uh, a lot of products in the body are ways that we alter their uh, function. So we defunction or functionalize. Um, proteins and, and enzymes by methylating them. Uh, it's a mechanism that the body uses and the MTHFR gene is a gene that codes for a particular transformation. Now, when you eat protein, protein consists of 20 amino acids and one of those amino acids is something called cysteine and methionine. Those are two separate, two separate amino acids. And as these get broken down, through the MTHFR gene, they produce something called homocysteine. And then homocysteine can actually be demethylated back to methionine and cysteine. Now, homocysteine is an amino acid. It is a form of protein, but it is a non-proteinogenic alpha amino acid. What does that mean? It is not a protein that occurs naturally in meat. It is not a protein that is used or an amino acid that is used by the human body. In fact, it is a waste product from the human body. So as the human body cycles through cysteine and methionine, it'll produce homocysteine and convert that homocysteine back to cysteine uh, and um, uh, methionine. And eliminate that from the body and it is excreted by the kidney. So we know that under certain conditions, high levels of methionine, oh, sorry, of, of homocysteine can actually damage the body. There are certainly um, issues that are related to this and issues that are related to homocysteine have been uh, um, assigned to a variety of different diseases. For example, osteoporosis or bone thinning, atherosclerosis or cardiovascular disease, uh, heart attacks, coronary artery disease, all the same thing, stroke, all the same thing, but also dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and neural tube defects in children when you have high levels of homocysteine. But here's the problem, folks. It really isn't so much about homocysteine levels being causative of that kind of damage. Homocysteine levels rise when you don't have certain hormones like B9, B6, B12, and if you're deficient in those, and very, very, very few human beings in today's world are truly deficient in, these, uh, in all of those vitamins to the point that it actually causes disease. Do we see it? Of course we do. But it is as rare as rocking horse manure. It's as rare as rocking horse manure in the modern diet because we're eating so much. However, Here's the problem, and let's get back to MTHFR. Of the true MTHFR deficiencies that allow for high levels of homocysteine to build up and potentially cause this damage, there are only around 50 cases known in the entire world. That's 50 out of between 8 and 9 billion people. As rare as hen's teeth, folks. Rare, 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 you are not suffering from uh, um, the chromosomal deficiency of the MTHFR gene. Okay? If that's the case, they would have picked it up in you as a child. It does not occur in adults in an unrecognized way. So the next question we have is, okay, now that we've started to do all this genetic testing and everyone's doing 21, 23 and me or whatever it is, and they're getting all their genes tested, well, we've got this beautiful test to look at what we call MTHFR polymorphisms. And what does that mean? That means that there's a slight variation in the gene coding for the, for the protein or for the enzyme, and that the enzyme may or may not work quite as well as the original enzyme. So there's slight differences in productivity of that enzyme. And, but remember, you need 
uh, there are two genes and they code for two separate proteins. One may be dominant, one may be recessive, but at the same time, uh, the MTHFR gene polymorphisms are now being picked up at a genetic level, and we look at the gene. That doesn't correlate necessarily with bad function. Understand where we're going here? So we've, got, we've discovered 24 polymorphisms of the MTHFR gene, but we don't know to what extent they influence homocysteine levels in the body, okay? And then, even though homocysteine levels are high, we don't know how that correlates to damage in the face of healthy B6, B9, folate, and B12 levels. So therein lies the problem, but here's what's happened. With the growth of direct-to-consumer genetic testing, the alternative medicine industry, this industry that has uh, uh, has some value, but really is a bunch of folks looking to make money or fear-mongering. And the alternative medicine industry has aggressively targeted, targeted a group of very dubious genetic tests that are highly profitable quack treatments. I'm being pretty vocal about this because they claim that MTHFR polymorphisms, despite the lack of any evidence, of health effects of these mutations results in all this harm and your heart attack and your stroke and your uh, blood clots and everything else are related to your MTHFR polymorphism. And they focus, focus especially on the autism spectrum disorders and yet there's absolutely no biologic link. So everyone's, oh my God, I've got the MTHFR gene. What should I do? What should I do? It doesn't matter, folks. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Make sure you're eating adequate food to take in B6, B9, B12 folate, which is generally occurs in regular food, but the whole MTHFR uh, gene fear-mongering, whether it's amongst the autism spectrum disorders, and believe me, folks, I can understand that, that if you have a child with autism, it's devastating and you're desperately looking for a solution. But looking to MTHFR is a problem because you have a polymorphism. Remember, there are 24 different types of genes as far as we know. That's snake oil, folks. Because always on the back end of that diagnosis, they're selling you something. They're pitching something. They're selling you something. They're trying to get you to buy into a product. And it is completely unnecessary because the association of MTHFR gene mutations with various diseases has not been established at all. If you're going to do anything, look at your homocysteine levels. And if homocysteine levels are through the roof and it's as rare as, again, very, very rare, then... Look at your vitamin levels. I'm not a big fan of taking vitamins in pill form. I typically get that from our food, except under very certain circumstances. But this should be a challenge to improve your nutrition. And then it doesn't matter. Don't buy into what the snake oil salesmen are selling when it comes to MTHFR gene polymorphism. Please, please, please. I see patients every, oh, I've got this gene. What should I do? What should I do? Ignore it, folks. You've just pissed your money away on the test, the 23andMe test, to look for some disease that you have. And then you're going to piss away even more money on snake oil. Well, that's okay if you won the lottery and you got a little bit of extra money. But the fear-mongering and the scariness of homocysteine MTHFR polymorphisms just should be completely ignored. Don't buy onto, don't clutch on those straws of somebody trying to sell you something. And yeah, I'm pretty aggressive about this because as long as we focus on that, we ignore the real problem. And the real problem is what charlatans are selling you and also what you should be eating for global health. Don't buy into their magic potions. Feel free to argue with me. Feel free to leave comments, folks. At the bottom of this, hit comments. But if you're going to make a comment, before you do, hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to this channel so that you can make more comments for and against me. And if you really like the value of what we're doing, 
So buy me a cup of coffee at my Patreon account at Carb Addiction Doc. It helps to make these videos free. It helps to uh, pay the rent. I don't profit from this myself directly, but it helps to keep these discussions free. And more and more, I'm hearing about MTHFR fear-mongering. Please, folks, please, folks, step back. Take a deep breath and look at the facts. And the facts just do not support what they're selling us. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram at Carb Addiction Doc, and you'll hear more, message, more messages like this. Whether you agree or disagree, if I've made you think, I've done my job. Thanks, folks.